Well, as it gets hotter here in Australia and the lawn starts to die again, God damn. I thought we could sit in the cool air conditioning and look back on some previous lighting and talk about how we did it. This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. All right, so this one here was from a commercial about a tool building company sort of thing. We shot this on the Alexa LF with the DZO Vespid lenses because they're a full frame lens that fits that sensor. We lit him with the little falconized flex light above and we could have used a bigger light outside and pushed it through the window with some diffusion. It wasn't a case of budget, it's more a case of crew and time. The more gear you get out of the truck and set up, the longer it takes to pack it all down and move to the next location. And there's always a juggling act with these shoots where you're running around to different locations and getting lots of quick shots. But I knew he wasn't moving, so it didn't really matter that the daylight was just there right in front of him. But you know, if he was to walk across the room and walk up to that saw, the light would just get unusually bright all of a sudden as he walks up underneath it. So it worked out okay with him just standing there. Then we blocked this window with some black fabric to stop him being front lit. Added two 600Ds with spotlights outside. One sort of bashing into that wall and creating some texture and the others hitting the saw blade and a bit of his body. Then we just put that work light in a spot in the background to add a bit more interest and color contrast. We were shooting this one at 30 frames a second just to slow it down ever so slightly. It's almost unnoticeable, but it's just enough. Then we had the shutter angle at 101.7 and this was because that practical light was flickering from us shooting at 30 frames a second. So we just dialed the shutter angle in increments until it stopped flickering and 101.7 was the sweet spot. Then we went on to shoot this shot of old mate looking outside the window. So again, we put those lights in the background, then used that panel light as a bit of a backlight. The window he was looking out wrapped around and we didn't want that front lighting him. So we just blacked that out again. And that keeps the contrast on the camera side of his face. The rest of the light hitting him was just bounce sunlight coming in through the window. So when you're shooting the LX LF in the open gate, which is the full sensor, the aspect ratio is almost square. So you have a lot of room top and bottom of the frame that you can crop out later, but it's really handy for reframing or stabilizing if you need. Another little thing, if you watch this channel, I use this panel light all the time. It's so handy that uh, Falcon Eyes Flex Light, but I've had it for such a long time and it's pretty worn and torn. I'd love if someone could recommend some new lights that are similar to that. Let me know, let me know in the comments or if any company, you know, wants to send me a similar light, you know, hit me up because I use that thing like 80% of the time. It's so handy just to have on standby whenever you need it. Then we move on to do this two shot out the front of the house. And when you're doing shoots like these, there's always certain times you wanna be outside because you can't control as much. So you, gotta, you have to rely on the sun. So in pre-production, we scheduled to do this one at this time of the day when the sun was just above the house backlighting them because we didn't wanna be here any earlier and have it behind this building or have it in the sky in the frame here. So we did some other shots and came here when it was in the spot we wanted it. Then we added some black floppies and fabric for some contrast. And what also works great is that the paper they're looking at is acting like a bounce light for them. You can see it here in between takes when the camera was still rolling, how much that paper is actually bouncing the light in. Then we moved on to a single of her and we just put a four x four frame of highlight material between her and the sun. It just takes away the harshness of the sun, but still looks like it could be the sun hitting her in a commercial sort of way. Here's another quick one of him working in the office that we lit with just one light. It was a, a 300D in a spotlight bounced onto the table and coming up and lighting him. This floppy here was to block that front light from the ceiling. You can see that would have been hitting him. So it keeps the contrast on his face. If you're a cinematographer, photographer or anything really, and you're trying to level up to get better creative jobs, having a website is crucial. 
so people can see your work and hire you. Squarespace is easy to use, you don't need to know how to code or anything like that. You can just drag and drop and it's good to go. So whether you want to show your portfolio of work, run an online store, everything is built into the site. If you want to build a website, you can start a free trial at squarespace.com slash lewispotts to save 10% off the first purchase. This was a music video I shot with some friends for a band called Spacey Jane. We built a cheap little set in the studio, really minimal, just three walls. Well, two walls and the back wall is just a curtain going all the way across. And on the other side is just a white studio wall that we bashed some light into. We did some scenes to look like daytime that was white and some to look like evening that, that we made a bit more blue. We were trying to make it look a bit weird and surreal with the heavy blue light. And that's a little trick if you want a window light and you can't afford to have trees and bushes outside in the studio, just use something like a white wall or a white piece of fabric. That's what David Fincher and his DP Eric did for the movie Mank. A lot of the sets, they just used something white outside the window. And they chat about it in this video here. And I said, hey, Jerry, what's outside those windows? And he goes, I go, you got trans lights? You got, and he goes, no, just white. Just white. And I go, that's, by the way, I literally was talking to somebody yesterday and I said, I think that's actually should be the future of like, which is if you need something, put it in. But if you don't, what do you, we, we end up not seeing that much out there anyway. Being there might be the, you know, one of the most beautifully photographed American movies of all time. And they didn't even, bo they didn't even bo bother to, I mean, it's so fantastic how quickly you fall into this. Like, yeah, it's just so bright outside. I mean, you know, it's, it's DC, it's right there. So for the other lighting, we had a 600D in a spotlight on the outside of the wall, bouncing in from above and hitting the table. A 300D in the lantern that we just moved around for each shot and a little tube light that we also just moved around for a backlight. And we shot this on the red with a Canon 17 to 120 zoom lens. It's a pretty funny lens because it has this electronic zoom motor that you can get some cool crash zoom shots with. Then for this part of the video in the red carpet space, we used the same slider and lens setup and we just bashed a 600D into the ceiling for some top fill light. We didn't need to do too much because the location was already pretty good enough with the window and the little practical lights on the side. We just didn't have a huge budget and crew to do too much else anyway. And that sandbag at the end of the microphone is just holding it so it doesn't get pulled into the shot with all the jumping around. Music video rock star problems. <laughs> This is another shot from a commercial that I thought is interesting and worth a mention because of the problem solving that we had with it. This is a lady lying in bed watching something on her iPad at dusk. The camera's on a gimbal and it needed to start on her in this shot, then arc around to see what she's seeing on the iPad, which was a green screen, then pan off and then it goes with a montage of a bunch of other clips. So I was trying to work out how to light this because we were shooting almost 180 degrees in the room and we wanted the light to look like it was coming from the screen because that's what it would look like at dusk if you had no lights on in the room. And the light on the screen was green so it would, it would glow a green light all over her if we turned everything else off. So we first tried to have a panel light, you know, above the screen, trying to cheat like the lights coming from the iPad. But the angle just didn't look very convincing and it didn't look like the light was coming from the iPad. I don't know what made me think of it, but I just thought, you know, the light has to be coming from the direction of the iPad. I just thought, let's stick one of those small little Aperture MC lights in the middle of the screen, and there'll be enough green around it to still key it out and replace it. And the light source will now be lighting her correctly to what it would look like if it was dusk and that was the only light on in the room. The only other thing we needed to remember was that the light needed to have a little gap of green between the light and the edge when we arced around. Then you can just remove the green, put a mat over the aperture light and track it, and then put whatever you want in there. Then also we shot this in the middle of the day, and what we did with that window was add a roll of ND gel, I think it was three stops, and then a roll of full blue gel 
to change the color temperature and to bring it down so it looked like dusk. All right, that's gonna do it. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.